Let's talk about Dan Ariely. He's a behavioral economist, a Duke University professor, a professor of psychology. He's written books called The Predictably Irrational and The Truth About Dishonesty. He does fascinating work studying human habits and how to change them. Most of us have encountered events in our lives that shape the way we view the world. For some of us, that may have happened early on in life. We don't think about what created the habits we have or why we picked the career we did. For some people, it's easy to think on the event that led them to make some of the career or big life choices they have made. For behavior economist Dan Ariely, it's very clear which event shaped his career choice. Dan Ariely suffered a horrific burn in the graduation ceremony when he was a teenager. He almost died. After that event, it would have been easy to fall into depression or despair, to think about how life had been unfair to him. However, Ariely used that time to study his environment. One of his observations on decision-making was the decision his nurses made when removing his bandages after his burn. The nurses essentially had two options. They could remove the bandages quickly or do so slowly. One option meant a lot of pain in a shorter amount of time. The other option provided less pain, but over a longer period of time. Ariely felt move, removing the bandages slowly was the better choice, but the nurses disagreed and removed them quickly. This led Ariely to research which was the better approach. He found in his research that it's better to remove the bandages slowly than quickly. He wondered how trained professionals like nurses who cared about their patients could get something so wrong. This led him to look for ways in which people act irrationally in other aspects of life. Ariely has led fascinating studies on people's irrational choices. When it comes to finance, romance, or other personal life choices, his driving question with his research is how to make the world a better place. He has found we aren't evolutionarily wired to make sound data-driven choices. It's not simple enough to give people accurate data and expect them to make wise choices. He has several amazing TED Talks in which he cites examples that demonstrate how we are influenced in the choices that we make. Two examples in his speeches that really stood out to me in how external influences impact our decision making are one, how countries decide who gets to be an organ donor or not, how you register to be an organ donor. The second example that really stood out to me was a case study asking doctors to recommend hip replacement surgery or not. In the first example, the organ donation program, countries in which people have to default to opt in to be an organ donor have lower rates of organ donation, whereas countries where the default is you're an organ donor and you have to opt out, those countries have a larger amount of organ donors. Ariely concludes that the person who designed the DMV form has a large influence in your decision. You will typically just stick to the default. In his sep second example with the doctors, Doctors were given case studies, and the case study said that the patient had already been prescribed a hip replacement surgery. But then they were told that not everything had been tried. They could still try an ibuprofen. Most of the doctors suggested that the patient not get hip replacement surgery done, that they get the ibuprofen instead. However, the case study went further. They then asked a case study of patients that had been prescribed a hip replacement surgery, but then they hadn't been prescribed ibuprofen or paroxicin. Just adding a third option made it so that the doctors stuck to the default. They allowed the patient to go to have the hip replacement surgery. This was very alarming to Aureli, but further proof that even trained professionals 
in their chosen field can have trouble making decisions and going against the default. When we're presented with a choice that is very impactful and meaningful, we have a hard time deciding. So we end up sticking to the default. Whatever design mechanisms are in place have an advantage over us deciding to go against that. We have a hard time making decisions and we rarely look at all the data in unbiased ways. It's important to come up with ways that allow our defaults to be better choices as a society at large. On an individual level, we should work to look at data while accounting for our biases and realize that we don't make the most objective choices all the time. Sometimes decisions we f which we feel are made out of free will are actually being driven by larger systems that we don't fully understand or examine. Ariely's driving question is how to make the world a better place. And he looks for ways to help people evaluate their decision-making process in more effective ways. So imagine a time that you made a decision that went really well. And what played a role in making that decision? Were there larger systems at play that guided you in that direction? Or maybe it was a decision that you felt didn't go so well. And were there also there larger, larger processes at play that maybe you haven't taken the time to fully evaluate and look at the biases in your choices. That is why I find Danny O'Reilly's work really fascinating and him as an individual extremely interesting. 